Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, lovely people of the YouTube universe. I am Fleep Engineer Manriquez. I am joined today by one of my very good friends, Mr. Lucien Zoll. Lucien, say hello and tell people who you are. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, Felipe, for having me on. Um, I'm Lucien Zoll. I am an Agile Transformation Consultant at Scrum, Inc., um, and I have a 30-year uh, history uh, in in uh, construction, all different kinds of construction. I've done everything from kind of high-end residential to, you know, skyscrapers and high-rise construction and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. I don't know. Look, look at how young he still looks. I just love that. <laughs> oh, don't say that. You can't say that anymore now that I hit 50 and, you know. <laughs> My God. This is back. <laughs> I, I feel, Lucien, like you're just a hair younger than me. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time coming in, we definitely want to get your, your comments and feedback. Go ahead and blow up that chat window. And if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to give us comments. I will be answering any and all comments on the replay. And if you're wondering, like, what is the EBFC show? Well, I am just so glad you asked. It's not just a cool thing that I snapped to life with the snap of a finger. It's also a program. It's a show. It's a podcast. Let's take a quick pause to just see what it's all about for just a second. Lucien, we'll be right back. The EBFC show exists to serve people in the construction industry. That's it. It's that simple. It's a sing <laughs> singular word. You like that, don't you, Lucien? I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, so Lucien and I today, we've got some beautiful oh, thing God. we're going to do. We are going to answer any questions, and we already have some questions pre-populated. Compliments of all the people we work with when we're teaching Scrum or just working out in the big wide world. And uh, that dog barking in the background just means it's time to get started. <laughs> way, to, way to use it. <laughs> Man, I don't let anything go to waste, Lucien. As you know, as trying to be lean business person, you're always trying to take advantage of all of the changing environments. And an agile business person, we have to just be able to pivot, my friend. Absolutely. Never get upset. You know that. Yes, sir. So here we are, Scrum and Design and Construction. That, that's where a lot of our passion is. Lucien, how long ago did you find out about Scrum? So... I found out about Scrum probably three years ago, four years ago, but I um, I didn't really understand what it was all about. I just heard about it from a friend, um, and um, and actually, I'm a fairly uh, fairly new to Scrum Inc. Um, I've only been at Scrum Inc. now for three and a half months. Um, it has been an amazing three and a half months. I can tell you, it's uh, just an awesome learning opportunity and, and a great opportunity to, to be able to help so many people um, who work in a field that I have worked in for a long time. So that's been incredible. Um, but I am newer to the scrum side of things than I am to the construction side of things. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's hard to tell, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this later, we're still in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic. And you yes. saw Lucienne just pause that's a that's a COVID phenomenon. When you try to think back in time through the <laughs> yeah. fog of the pandemic, it's very hard yes. to think back. I have I have trouble too. Like uh, I had a birthday earlier this year, and I thought I was a year older than I really was. And my wife had been telling me for months, and I finally <laughs> had to like look at my driver's license just to make sure that I wasn't losing my mind. <laughs> but I was you know, told that, that can be a strategy too. You know, you tell everybody a year older, and then they say, "Oh, you look." You know, you look younger than that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lucien. I'm going to take that as a fake compliment to me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got up on the screen. We took care of our introductions, Lucien. You did. Yeah, and you came in like a boss. One of the things I want to pop up right away, if you're watching this and you have no idea what Scrum is, we're going to put some free resources in the show notes so that you can check out and get some more definitional things. Or if you think you've been doing Scrum, we'll correct those bad habits, uh, which often can happen because of the telephone game. It's just one of those things that can happen. You know, I try to learn from the source as close as I can. Dr. Jeff Sutherland, Ken Schwaber, did an amazing job of making that available to everybody free of charge forever at the scrumguides.org. 
So check that out. We'll put that in the show notes, Lucien. But let's just hear from somebody that's been doing Scrum since about 2008, 2009. Our good friend, Mr. JJ Sutherland, making an appearance on the on the live stream via the technology of YouTube. So, or as the, the way that some of the older folks say, the you and the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, Lucien? Yeah, also on the internets. <laughs> yes, also on the internets, yeah. Or some of the, the people, I know a lot of people in the paleo world call it the interwebs. Yes, I've heard that as well. I've heard that a lot. So here we're going to go in. Let's go full. I'm going to go full on this, Lucien, so we, I'm going to play the video. Let's check it out. Absolutely. JJ, I love what you said, too, just now. You said you don't have to ask permission. What advice would you give to them? Prioritization, rapid feedback. The first thing is prioritize. Don't try to do everything at once. What's the most important thing? Get that to done and then go on to the next thing. And of course, you want to have bite-sized pieces. What are you going to do tomorrow to get you closer? And what's the most important thing? And how do you get feedback to know that you're right? And in construction, it's a lot of waiting. And it's basically, can you get the right people and the right equipment at the right times? A gas company, you know, they're extracting from this gas field. 18 days was sort of like their average for drilling a new well. And the fastest they'd ever done it was like 10 days or something like that. By just prioritizing and making everything transparent where everything is, they went from 18 days to an average of six days. Three times faster. Like everyone knows, oh, we should prioritize. We should focus. We should not get distracted, right? Everyone knows it, but they don't do it. And what Scrum does is give you a framework that allows you to do it. If you find a place that doesn't work, call me. So that that's pretty awesome. Let me uh, get a little distance here. Okay. What I love about that video, Lucien, is that here we're, we're hearing from somebody that's been doing Scrum for decades. And one of the first pieces of advice he gives, so critical, ladies and gentlemen, the same thing I tell people, I've been doing Scrum since for 2014, is that you don't need to ask anybody. I was on a hard bid construction project working as a project manager in Southern California, beautiful Southern California. Shout out to all the people listening in Orange, California. What a gorgeous little town. I love that town. And uh, I picked up the Scrum Framework reading Jeff's Red Book, and I just decided that I was going to do it. And you're like, what Red Book? This Red Book. Hello. This Red Book right over here. This one. <laughs> this one. Scrum, the other doing twice the work and half the time. I tell Jeff all the time, like, Jeff, Lucy, and now you're my witness that I actually do this all the time. I've actually I don't... seen you do this multiple occasions, so it's, it's true. True fact. It's true. It's true, Jeff. I'm pumping this book because this book answers why Scrum works and where it came from, the history of it. And I remember Jeff saying to me, he's like, Felipe, people are just asking me all the time. I just needed to get it out there. So if you want a super deep dive into what it is and how it works, it's all in that book. <laughs> Gorgeous audio narration by Mr. J.J. Sutherland himself, who you just heard on that video, Jeff's son. The other book, This Is Lean, we won't talk about right now. Let me get that out of here, Lucy. By the way, okay. Felipe, when it, when it comes to the Red Book, I just want to give everyone a warning. Um, you should make sure you are prepared to leave reading that book hyped because yeah. I have not met one person who read that book and didn't leave like, I'm going to change the world. Uh, so <laughs> that, it's, it's really got that effect. So you be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely, Lucy. And that, you know, you're making a really good point because that book. I mean, even in, I think the, the book ends kind of like the scrum guide does where it talks about changing the world in 11 steps. Yeah. I believe that is the, uh, how the appendix kicks off. So you get through the whole book and it's at the very end and you're just like, well, 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 that's it. And he, and Jeff gives all these examples of like how it happens. So people check that book out. It's awesome. And if you're watching the live stream right now, um, well, we know you're not cause it's too early. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the first one. Like this is, this is a lot of fun, Lucien. Yeah. It's I gotta, great. I gotta thank you for encouraging me to, to do it too. Oh, right on. Well, thanks. Thanks again for having yeah. me. So I'm going to show this, uh, what, what I got here. Let's go to our little board here. So zoom, I zoom back on our board where we had the ask me anything format, which I love like people, if you were here awake with us and you're putting things in the chat, 
we'll answer those questions. You put things in the comments, we'll answer those questions later. So don't be shy. I've got here a little scrum framework for Lucienne and I to work through. So we're playing with a uh, to-do doing done the most basic, simplest scrum board that there is for our little live stream. And we're going to just dive into, we looked at what uh, JJ said, you don't need permission. So just get started. Now what's come up on deck is understanding this LPS and scrum framework. I know that's a lot of stuff. So let's just start simple first with a little diagram. This is a little hand diagram I drew, Lucien. How's that look? Is that zoomed in nicely? Beautiful. Okay, so this is the Scrum framework drawn out, very famous, the two circle, the two connected circles. And it's got open arrows, but in reality, you cycle through this on whatever your time box is for your sprint. So your sprint is just a cycle of time. It could be a work week. It could be every two weeks. It could be every month. And there's some good reasons for why you stay steady with that. And then last planner system of production controls, which is a mouthful of something invented by Glenn Ballard and Greg Howell in the 1980s and then made public in the 1990s. Coincidentally, just like Scrum, what a coincidence. 1990s, powerful time. Transformative, yeah. Very transformative. And what they did with LPS is they were trying to solve the problem of construction schedules, which Lucien and I have lived and are, I'm still living it. I'm still living construction schedules every day of the week, Lucien. So I know the struggle is real, ladies and gentlemen. The last planner system has got five human conversations. And in those conversations, you will get to a consistent, human-centric, individual, heavy-duty interaction handoff flow of work that is reliable and much more predictable than what traditional waterfall scheduling gives you. And we'll show a picture of waterfall scheduling first in just a sec. I just want to highlight a couple of things. Lucy, and this is the first time you're seeing this, right? Uh, do we have this diagram mm -hmm. in the Scrum and Design and Construction course? Okay, I might have, yeah, I might have shown this in the Scrum I think it was Design. in the resources, yeah. Right. And then I've also, I show this in the Link Construction <clears throat> Institute uh, Ready, Set, Go Scrum course as well. But I just want to highlight a couple things. So those watching that are familiar with Scrum Framework, nothing new here. The new things are in the orange sticky notes. So in Last Planner System, five conversations. The first conversation is what should we do? In construction terminology, that is the backlog or all of the tasks that we need to do in order to complete this build. Could be a, a hospital, a school, a bridge, a road, a sidewalk, a playground, a solar array, a wastewater treatment plant, an airport terminal, a tenant improvement, any type of construction, a home renovation. It can be done there too. So you start in the beginning, like identifying what the work is that's in the backlog. And then you move into what can we do? You go into this planning effort where you pull off things from the backlog and milestones. And I'll show those in a second. And that generates that phase. What can we do in this first phase? what makes sense to do. And as we're doing that, it's all under the guise of having a goal or the, as we say in lean terminology, conditions of satisfaction, which are team-wide goals. I'm not going to cover that here. That's definitely a topic for another time. The sprint time box is that cycle. If we're going to work weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, whatever cycle you choose with your team, just stick with it for a couple of cycles. You can definitely change it because in Agile, you know, if we don't change Lucy and we're dead, right? That is for sure. That is in anything if you don't change your dead. And anything. Powerful, Lucien. So that sprint time box is going to give us our look-ahead schedule. Very common in construction today, three weeks to six weeks. Those are That's a good range of how people are forecasting out. Yeah, there's some strategies for longer-term forecasting. We'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, you got your daily huddle, your daily scrum, facilitated by the scrum master or the team captain. And at the end, you're looking at what do we actually do at the end of the cycle, at the end of the work week, at the end of the two weeks, at the end of the month. You're just looking at what we did. And that involves the client. Just like in Scrum, in the sprint review, anybody and everybody and their mother can come check out and see what you did. Show and tell. 
And then after that meeting, we go into the retrospective where it's back just again, just the team looking at what went well, what can be better, what process can we improve? Or as they say in Canada, what process can we improve? Lucien, you're pretty close to Canada. Do you have any Canadian friends close to you? Uh, yeah, I have a few actually. Yeah. So they'd appreciate that process, that process of improvement. And then we're learning. We're also going to identify an experiment to improve the process for next time. So that's that's that. So let's, oh, Lucien, any questions on this before I go to the example? No, I guess I'm seeing that. So you were saying the orange is uh, is the orange last is, planner. Yes. Um, and I know that last planner is its own thing. Um, it may obviously work really well with Scrum, but it also seems that it's parallel. Like everything that Scrum is um, recommending, I'm seeing something just with a slightly different wording. So what would you say is the difference between last planner and Scrum? Well, the big difference is why they were invented. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's some similarities and then the adaptation. So last planner implementation, what a great question, Lucien. What a great question. Last planner implementation is heavy duty geared towards helping people make their schedules work. So that's like the, that's the genesis behind it. Whereas mm -hmm. Scrum is geared towards helping people make the work visible do only value added work, yep. create very limited flow. LPS also helps to create limited flow, but not as well, in my opinion. I'm biased, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And, and I've been a last planner practitioner for a decade. So that's years more, many more years more than Scrum. But Scrum has elevated my LPS game to another level. Whole nice. nother level. HNL, Lucien. Whole nother level. <laughs> okay so i highly recommend that that's a good that's a good differentiator let's look at now how it looks with a real example so and this is just a, a partial example just to get your get you some experience so a waterfall schedule we call if i pour water on top of the schedule it, and gravity's pulling down it's going to just flow down to the right and these are all logic connections from a very popular waterfall scheduling software. And there are many different types of software, right? And I'm using this, I'm showing LPS in this way, Lucien, like I would in real life with a real team, designer construction team, doesn't matter. We've got roles. I've identified myself as the coach. Yep. Uh, since my birthday is in February, Lucien, ameth amethyst is my color. So hence the purple. Hello. Nice. <laughs> so, I, there's a coach, there can be a facilitator, a superintendent or a design manager, different trade people. You can see I got the architect here. Everybody's color coded and that color coding comes down to a key later. So you can kind of see who are the players mm -hmm. of the schedule. In this waterfall schedule, we've got starts, finish to start activities. You can see the logic, like we're not going to start the office building addition project until the design of that addition is complete. And then we're going to go into review and approval and so on and so on. Eventually, we get into some concrete operations here in the middle. Uh, for those of you seeing this CPM schedule, critical path message schedule for the first time, these bars are red because the software has determined that if these activities take longer or shorter than a day, they have zero float, which means that if, if this forming and pouring concrete takes a day longer, it creates a cascade effect through the entire schedule and the scheduled project completes a day later day I'm for sure day that, delay, that happens. which happens every every day three out of four jobs lucian on yeah. average in commercial construction are late I, I, that's one thing i can certainly confirm um from many years in construction that gantt chart is a liar yep <laughs> it's a false sense of security yes and then this these bars here in black are called hammocks and they're just kind of rolling up summarizing all the activities below it's supposed to make it easier to read. And also it kind of summarizes these work breakdown structure things here. So yeah, if you've got more questions on CPM, definitely give me a call. We can laugh about it. Okay. So this team has a condition of satisfaction or a goal. They want to have the last Haytong employee moved in by August 8th. Let me fix that because that's, let's get like a, we can tidy that up a little. There we go. August 3rd. 
2022 is when this last employee is going to move into this building. Okay. So that's the, we've identified the goal just like we do in scrum, right? We've got our goal overarching goal for the whole thing. Now let's identify some milestones. We've got milestones, not obvious in the schedule, right? Lucien, you can't see like some obvious milestones here. You need to have a little bit of knowledge. So yeah. using our little bit of construction experience, we asked a team to establish some milestones based on just the hat mix or the summaries. Every schedule is not going to have this, ladies and gentlemen. So you might have to use your imagination and figure out how the milestone comes to an end. It usually signifies the end of a phase or beginning of a phase. And then Felipe's tip for better milestones is to add some adjectives so it's more descriptive and some dates. So here's from the, the schedule had just this. And then we had a team say, well, let's make it review and approve. Now we've got some adjectives and some action words. And we have a, a date of December 16th. And you can see on my bar of 2020, that's at the end of the bar. Halfway through 2021, we're gonna our foundations will be done. And then in 2022, at the beginning of the year, we're going to complete the rough-ins. And then the final person is moving in by August 3rd. Makes total sense, doesn't it, Lucien? Sure. Now, looking at this just like this, ladies and gentlemen, if you do just this, taking your milestones and making them visual like this where your meetings are happening, I guarantee you you're going to gain some schedule time because people are going to be exposed to meaningful dates in a very easy-to-understand view. Like, look at this here on screen. You're taking that in. Now, look at this. What's easier to read? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then the next thing I've got some guides here. Like if you contact me, I'll probably share some of the stuff with you. This stuff lives online already. So there's some guides here. Um, this is one's written by Greg Howell for superintendents and foremen. I've had a lot of architects tell me they really like this guide too. This one right here, which gives more breakdown of what I'm showing you very quickly. And then, you know, the, at the middle of last planner, we're in that, uh, generating our look ahead schedule. The first thing we're going to do before we put any dates down is we're going to create that best phase. So like in scrum Lucien, we organize our tasks in the to-do list or in the scrum backlog based yeah. on priority order set by the team. That is identical to what happens in the phase pool or what people call reverse phase planning. If they're, if they were born before 1990, they'll call it reverse phase planning. I'd say like if they're born after 1990, they'll just call it pool planning. So look at this, Lucien. See how this looks? What is going on here is we've got our starting milestone or our releasing condition. Then this activity is happening, followed by nearly at the same time, site survey. When these two things are done, then we start, we start site clearing and grubbing. Then we do mass excavation. Remember, these are color-coded. These are the same company. Yeah. And we're changing company footing, grade beam, and rebar, doing some underground, eventually getting to pouring concrete and then having the foundations complete by June. Now, a lot of people are like, well, that doesn't look like Scrum, Felipe. What if I did this? Now, let me just take a copy. Using the magic, and ladies and gentlemen, this is Mural, in case you're wondering, like, what is Felipe doing this in? He's doing this in Mural. So I can just take these activities and show them in the Scrum framework. It would look like this. Let me get these out of the way. All I'm doing is uh, moving these so that they kind of show up as we do Scrum. And I'll just look back here to see. This is first. So I'll put that first, second, third. Now you see exactly how it looks just like Scrum now, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have this. I'm just going to the next column because I don't have space. Otherwise, I just keep going straight down. Now I have my sprint backlog. And when I do when I get all of these things done, I've achieved my goal. Yeah. So I would just write like uh do right, I could do that for the phase. Spell things right. You know, it always helps to spell things right, Lucian. <laughs> and then now it looks like I'm just doing exactly scrum. Mm-hmm. I'll just stick those up here, like on top. I'll put them here like this as a line, and then I could always add in a line. You know, I could get fancy people. 
and put some lines in there so it looks like a scrum board. It only takes seconds. And if you're on a whiteboard or you're in an office, I mean, you can just do this. You can do this on a table if you wanted to. You don't need this software. I mean, there's plenty of software out there. So now if we're, if we're working in this phase, I could park this design and engineering completion. When, that, when that's done, we'll throw that to done. Then we're going to start with the survey. See how I did that? No time. We'll roughly know. Now from here, there's another component of LPS where it moves into a calendar view, which I'm not showing here, Lucien. I just wanted to show a little bit so people get a sense of when I see this phase pool, reverse phase pool, or we do pool pool, we're focusing on handoffs. We're focusing on main pieces of work. We can absolutely ask people how long things are going to take, but that's not the point. The point of this is to get the best possible sequence that achieves the goal of it completing this milestone, which helps us get to the goal of getting to that last employee moving in by August 3rd. Everything ties back fractally back up. Mm -hmm. And then we could, in my mind, I'm thinking about those activities like this. <clears throat> so now you know, Lucien, if you're doing Scrum, you're kind of doing LPS. Oh, I might, I might phrase that in reverse. Um. <laughs> if you're doing LPS, you're kind of doing Scrum? Is that what yeah. you'd say? That's what I, I'm, I, that's how I would see it, but that's just me. Um, yeah, that, that's just from, from, you know, from where I sit. Yeah. I love that. And then like to show, cause we had these things happening at the same time, establishing the site fence on the survey are two different companies. I know there's just a hair of difference of color here. Mm -hmm. So those would be happening simultaneously in our doing column. And then when those when those got done, Lucien, you know, we'd have the the beautiful serotonin drip of getting that yes, smashed to done, and then we pick up our next two concurrent activities, and then they're only concurrent because oh, they're actually not concurrent. So boom, put that back. Yeah. Based on the sequence, because this is the same crew doing these two things, so they can't do two different types of things when there's some predecessor relationship. So, I mean, that's that's the gist of it. There are a couple more things to show on LPS, but I'm not going to show that now. I yeah. just want to pause, Lucien, and just answer any questions you might have. Or Sure. Look I mean, at the, we got two people. Hey, two people out there. Just want to give you all a welcome. Thanks for checking out the live stream. Lucien and I are having a blast. If you have any questions about Scrum or Last Planner System, this is the Ask Me Anything live stream. So, Lucien's got plenty of experience working at Scrum Inc. I'm also a Scrum Inc. trainer, and I'm working for a large general contractor. I've got plenty of experience with design and construction and teams using Scrum from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, and even across the pond with my partners in Ireland in the UK practicing Scrum as well. So good morning, Ireland, or good afternoon, I should say. It's already afternoon over there. All right. So throw your questions in the in the chat or in the comments. And Lucien and I will will answer. Oh, Lucien, I chased one person away. It's okay. <laughs> I <think> it's, shy. <laughs> it's all good, man. So, what were you going to say, Lucien? Well, I was I was just going to say um, one of the things that I I think is a really valuable aspect of um, Scrum is uh, working in shorter increments. Um, so that you can learn from the mistakes and anything that might go wrong and improve it for the next time. Kind of that, you know, you have your hypothesis, you test it, you see what actually happened in reality. I think one of the big issues with the Gantt chart and why most people in construction, you might have to use the Gantt chart, but you don't necessarily have faith in that schedule. People, you know, even myself from, from, my years in construction, I see that awesome little black circle at the top that says when they're going to move in. And I'm thinking to myself, good luck. Um, good luck. <laughs> and so that's just my instinctual reaction to that yeah. based on years of experience in construction where, you know, everyone tells you what's going to happen when this thing is supposed to be done. Right. Right. And, and because a lot of these projects are planned, you know, soup to nuts, the, every dish spoon and fork, included along the way and then they say well this is going to be done at this time 
on this day. But if you if you're working in those long iterations, you don't know that everything's shot until kind of until it's too late, until the end. And so, you know, a big advantage that I see in Scrum is working in much shorter increments so that you can see what's happening in reality. Um, how does Last Planner deal with that, making things visible? And um, do they also recommend working in those shorter increments? So that's a, another great question, Lucien. So the answer is yes. So the framework, just like I've overlaid LPS on top of Scrum, mm -hmm. and we talked about iterating and cycling. In the Last Planner system, if you're on a, pro a project, or as they say in Canada, a project, that lasts around a year or so. It's just very typical. Many construction projects sure. last, you know, a year plus, two years, depending on the size. I just want to get past like a summer. So more than three months. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have this meeting where you do this pool plan once a month. So every four weeks, it's just the natural cycle in construction. It's a monthly cycle. It's very mm -hmm. common in construction. Billings are on monthly. Uh, a lot of inspections, milestones, a lot of things happen on a 30-ish day cycle, so monthly cycle. So every month, Lucien, they come back together and they bring everybody in, all the last planners. If we're in construction, the foreman, if we're in design, the cycle is smaller in design. It tends to be every two weeks or every week when it's very early in design. So they go through this longer conversation of like, what, what do we have in the backlog? What should we be looking at for the upcoming milestones or decision points? And then working through the cycle iteratively to the end where they're developing that work plan, that forecasted schedule of reliable commitments, Lucien, because the human beings themselves make the tags, be it digital or with real sticky notes. Yeah. And that's a lot different than being handed or having a CPM schedule yeah. thrust upon you, pushed upon you, if you will rather than us working together to pull from our minds and our experiences and the real conditions of what's happening in the field, it's very agile. LPS mm -hmm. is very agile in nature because it's always looking to give people opportunities to share their thinking and to make it very visual with the tags. Like I showed you the difference between the milestone in that view versus the, uh, the waterfall. So let's take, let me bring that back up just so we can see it again. That's a great, did I answer your question? Cause I got excited. I mean, I, I want to make yeah, sure. No, I, actually... I, think, I think you did. I wonder kind of a little bit further with that. If you are so, so scrum communication and kind of getting everybody on the team um, aligned happens daily, right? We have the right. daily scrum 15 minute meeting. Everybody who's going to be doing the work is there. We talk about, you know, what happened yesterday, what's happening today, what are our impediments. Um, that seems to me really valuable. So are you only um, in LPS, are you only having this monthly meeting or um, are there other ways that people are communicating in LPS similar to Scrum? Another fantastic question by Lucien. So in LPS, there's also a daily huddle. Instead of calling it the daily scrum because it was done, they didn't know that scrum was out there when they did it, but they knew that there was this power in having people come together for a stand-up meeting. And that, that daily huddle is 15 minutes or less, just like in scrum. Mm -hmm. I mean, this and good things happen, right? And get shared across mm -hmm. industries. So every day, typically in the mornings, uh, there are a few teams that do it at the afternoon, but most teams that I know practicing LPS Lucien, they get together in the morning, typically after coffee break, because that's just a natural time in construction. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in the AM hours, and they check in at the board, they'll check in, let's say they'll check in down here and just verify that this will be here, but I'm not showing uh, a calendar view of what this looks like. Uh, I just don't have an example ready, Lucien, mm -hmm. but they'll check in with, with the visual tags and time and they'll see that I'm still committed. So people say like what they did yesterday, what they're working on now, where they are, do they have any impediments, roadblocks or constraints stopping them? And it'd be something new because in that, that longer planning session, Lucien, they identify things that need to be handled so that people can be fully productive. And they call that the weekly work plan. 
in LPS language. And that means that the next horizon, it'd be like the sprint backlog. All the things in the sprint backlog are clear. They meet that invest criteria. They're actionable. They're small enough to be completed in the cycle. All of those same exact best practices happen in LPS hmm. when the people come together during that daily check-in. And I've seen teams, Lucien, with like 50 people, 50 last planners still do that meeting in less than 15 minutes because it is highly visual and people can just walk the, the pool planning boards yeah. backwards and identify things. And there's, there's good practices for parking lots. There's good practices for issue resolution. Some people like to do issue tracking logs when things go hairy and they have to do a separate meeting. There's good processes for that. Or as they say in Canada processes for that to knock that out. So yeah, no, super good. Very similar. Hmm. I think they have more things in common. The, some of the vocabulary is just see, a little I mean, different. honestly, it seems uh, it seems like a mirror, you know, in some ways of of each other. Um, it so definitely the, does. LPS is specific to construction and design, right? Um, Scrum is something that we're we're at Scrum Inc. We're implementing it in literally every industry. I, you know aerospace and energy and obviously design and construction and and of course the traditional stuff the you know software and IT yeah. and you know manufacturing we use it everywhere um i wonder one of the things that um one of the other things that scrum uses as a metric of success but also as a predictor because we're talking about kind of the gantt chart or um, you know, the phase plan, all of this stuff um, is uh, a happiness metric, which I know a lot of times can get a little bit of a bad rap because people, yeah. it's kind of like, oh, this cruncher granola, kumbaya, right? But, <laughs> but, it, but actually, in my experience, any time I was working on a crew with a bunch of people who were miserable, the quality of the work was no good and right. a ton of mistakes happened and people are just burnt out and it does affect quality and productivity. And so one of the things that Scrum does is actively measure um, happiness of the people doing the work. Does LPS address that or is that something they're not as concerned with? What a great question. So, the, there are two things that they look at in LPS and the original version of it. One is PPC, percent plan complete, which looks at, it's a reverse uh, looking metric, a backwards looking metric. Like of all the things we had on the plan, like if we try to do 10 things this week and we did eight, we do eight out of 10, that's 80%. We had an 80% PPC. Yep. It just tells us what happened last cycle, right? And it's, yep. so that doesn't tell you that much uh regular scheduling cpm scheduling each schedule activity on average only has a 48 to 54 percent chance of being completed as scheduled that's a coin flip yeah. so ppc gives you a little better reliability measure of like how the team's performing they're not letter grades though 80 percent is not a b minus yeah. yeah it's not and then they look at variance so they track variance like when something doesn't go to plan we understand with the team like why did it not go to plan? Do a quick root cause analysis. And then we might even Pareto chart that so we can find out where are the opportunities to go coach the team? Where are the things in the logistics or the flow that we need to change so that we can have some more reliability? Both of those things have people having emotional responses, Lucien, but sure. it's not the same as the happiness metric. So people, the happiness metric is such a powerful concept. It even made the cover of the Harvard Business Review at one point where they showed uh, the impact, like Lucien said, happier people are more productive people. And it's just like a much better environment. So not all scrum teams, Lucien, do happiness tracking. Only the high highest performing team. So if you want a high performing scrum team yeah. or a high performing LPS team, you should look into the happiness metric. And some teams doing integrated project delivery, Lucien, actually do something similar to the happiness metric, but they call it team health. Yeah, There's been a lot of research that's come out of Google for psychological safety. One of the outcome outpourings of that research, and it's continued to be research for decades, is that how are the people working together? Someone's 
state of mind, their happiness level, if you will, is a forward predictor of the team's success. Absolutely. You'll see a dip in happiness before you see the productivity slip. Yeah. You notice the first I've so I've gone to some teams that are doing the uh, team health yeah. and an IPD integrated project delivery team, and they'll show those metrics visually out. And yeah. you can see those key performance indicators with all the other metrics like budget schedule and other yeah. things that they're tracking issues. And you can kind of see like everything is chasing that team health number. Yes. As they, as they turn into a number. So yeah, I, mean, I think, I think, the thing is, like I say, I think it kind of gets a um, a bad rap, especially in construction, right? I mean, right. Can, you know, the, the design and construction industry, you pick the wrong day to bring your feeling to work. It's going to get banged up and bruised. You probably want to leave that in your lunchbox and take it home and make it safe, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. That's a perfect analogy. Right? <laughs> um, but the reality is that, and the thing that I found really interesting um, when I was learning about all of this stuff is that, you know, finances, if you're looking at the financial success of the pro project, finances will only tell you what happened. It right. cannot predict what is going to happen. You could, a company could have a financially great year one year and a terrible year the next and have no idea why, right? It, it, it is not, it does not tell you the future. It only tells you the past. And the thing that I that really kind of resonated with me with happiness as a metric is that it can predict the future. If you if you care to listen, right, and you have your finger on the pulse of what's happening with the people doing the work, and you notice, hey, there's a change here, there's there's a drop in happiness, and you are able to address that quickly, you can you can change the course of what's going to happen. Versus you know, financially, here's what we made. And that's the story of what happened. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a pretty powerful metric. I, I almost wonder if we should use a different terminology than the happiness metric. Um, I look, I think team health is actually maybe more accurate. But even that, I mean, you know, the construction industry is not known for uh, its fuzzy feelings. Um, that's not, so, you know, we have to come up with a name that's, you know, <laughs> really powerful and you know that makes people think yeah this is you know this is this is something this doesn't have to do with feelings don't worry but uh but actually it does it has to do with feelings because human beings are getting the work done yeah i've seen people that uh in construction lucien that i thought were like never going to show their feelings in the last two years show their feelings i think the pandemic yeah. has like softened a lot of that and there is much right. more focus on feelings in the industry so maybe if team health doesn't resonate with people talk to the skeptics that you're working with and see what makes sense to them what you can call it i think i learn a ton from people that are skeptical of these new ideas absolutely so that's that's one good way lucien i want to respect your time i'm gonna give you the last word before we close this down but just for people watching again just want to do a quick pause for what is the EBFC show all about and why is Lucien here? So I'm going to just do a quick little commercial snap. Lucien, you'll be right back. When you come back from this 10 second pause, you're going to get the last word, my friend. The EBFC show exists to serve people in the construction industry. All right, Lucien. <laughs> By the way, that never gets old. Always keep doing that. Uh, <laughs> you got it, buddy. So, so uh, again, I'm very thankful to, you know, you took the time and, and uh, uh, it's been really interesting to learn a little more about Last Planner System. You know, in the in our scrum and design and construction class, that is something that has come up uh, where people have asked the question of, well, how does scrum work with Last Planner? Um, you know, how do the two integrate? Um, and, you know, I think, again, something that you, Felipe, have said and something that a lot of people uh, who are very experienced coaches and trainers at Scrum Inc. say is, um, you know, you don't have to know everything about everything. If you want to make a change, you have to just start and do something. Um, you know, you don't need permission, as you said earlier, as JJ so rightly said. Um, but also beyond not needing permission, you need to actually do something because you can read all the books in the world. Um, eventually, 
you have to do something. And so that would be, that would be the thing that I would encourage people to do. Um, you know, your show is a great resource. I would also recommend people uh, go to uh, scruminc.com. Um, there's a ton of resources there. There are case studies and all kinds of great information there on Scrum. Um, and actually just shameless plug for anybody who doesn't know, we do have on LinkedIn the uh, Scrum in Design and Construction community, Global Community of Practice group. Um, and we would love to see more of you there. It's a great community. Um, and, you know, you have access to find people like Felipe here that you can ask questions of. Uh, and it's really interactive. That's what we're going for. And uh, so far it's been great, but it's it's a new thing. So if you haven't already done so, definitely come by and uh, join us there. That's beautiful, Lucien. We'll put those links in the show notes for everybody. And again, uh, thank you, Lucien, for coming on and helping me answer everything <laughs> in our AMA <laughs> style. That was, uh, that was a blast, man. Thank you so much. That was so awesome. Thanks for having me. Take care, everybody.